Welcome to part one of these optics lectures where we shall be talking about thin lenses. I'd like to begin by reviewing the sign convention for lenses. Here's a lens and the optical axis and all objects that are to the left of the lens have a positive object distances. All images that are formed to the right of the lens have positive image distances. So unlike mirrors where both object and image distances were considered to be positive to the left of the mirror, here we have two different sign conventions for objects and for images. And the same sign convention also applies to the focal length of this lens because the focal length is simply the image distance for an object that is infinitely far away. So the sign of the focal length is the same uh, as the sign of the image distances. So if the lens is a converging lens, for example, like we have in this picture, so we know that the focal length, uh, the focal point is to the right of the lens, so the focal length will be positive. Uh, for a diverging lens, the focal length will be a negative number. So there are basically two ways to find information about the image formed by a given object and with a given lens. One is graphical and at least it gives us some qualitative information and if the diagrams that we draw are carefully drawn to scale, in fact we can also get some quantitative information as well about the image. The other method is an analytical method where we use some, some uh, equations to get information about the image. So let's begin by looking at the graphical method. The graphical method essentially consists of taking the rays that come from the object, making them pass through the lens and seeing where they intersect. Now normally this is hard to do but there are three particular rays called principal rays for which this is actually quite easy to do. Uh, let me show you how that works. So here once again is a lens and we're going to assume that it's a converging lens, so the focal point is to the right. Now the focal point is, remember, it's the image or where the image is formed for an object that is infinitely far away. So for an object that is infinitely far away, all the rays come in towards the lens parallel to the optical axis. All right, let's place an actual object somewhere near the lens. And so the first ray that we're going to consider is precisely a ray that comes in parallel to the optical axis because we know by definition of what the focal point is that it must pass through the focal point when it emerges from the lens. Another ray that is easy to draw is the one that goes straight through the middle of the lens because that one is undeflected. It doesn't change direction. Now in the paraxial approximation, so when we're looking at objects near the optical axis, we know that all the rays will cross at the same point. So if I want to find where the image is located, all I need is two rays, because two rays will give me the correct intersection. So I, I could already say the image is going to be formed right here, at the intersection of these two rays. There is, however, a, a third auxiliary ray, which may sometimes come in handy, which passes through the so-called secondary focal point. I can draw a point which is symmetrical to F with respect to the lens. And this is called the secondary focal point F prime. So it is also at a distance from the lens equal to the focal length in absolute value but to the left of the lens. And the reason why this is useful is because of reversibility of light. I know that if a parallel ray, parallel to the optical axis, emerges from the lens, passes through the focal point. So a ray that passes initially through the secondary focal point will emerge parallel to the optical axis and it will intersect the other two rays at the same point. So in a sense it's superfluous. But uh, when you're doing ray tracing you can use any two of these three auxiliary rays and you can choose the two that are most convenient. Um, and although we've only done this qualitatively, 
we see some feature, some features of the image. The image is real because it is formed by the intersection of rays that actually do converge to a point. So if I put a screen there, I would actually see the image projected on the screen. Uh, we can also see that it's inverted. It's in the opposite direction to the object, and it's reduced in size. It's smaller than the object. Let's take another example, this time using a diverging lens. So here's our lens. It's thinner in the middle, which is a telltale sign that it's a diverging lens. And when we draw the primary focal point, because the focal length is negative, so it has to be in the negative image distance space, so to the left of the lens. OK, once again, we have an object somewhere to the left of the lens also, and we're going to draw some auxiliary rays. The first one is going to be parallel to the optical axis again, and this time, because of the location of the primary focal point, we can't make it pass through the focal point after it emerges from the lens. But what we can say is that it will appear to come from the primary focal point when it emerges from the lens. It looks like this. If I extend the outgoing ray backwards, that extension passes through the primary focal point. Another auxiliary ray is the one that passes through the center of the lens, and that one is always undeflected. And again, from the intersection of these two rays, I can already tell where the image is going to be formed. And I'll leave it up to you as an exercise to draw the third principal ray passing through the secondary um, focal point. So from this diagram, we can tell, once again, the basic properties of the image. It's a virtual image because it is not formed by rays that are actually converging at a point. Rather, it's formed by rays that appear to come from a point behind the lens. It's upright, and it's also smaller than the object, so it's reduced in size. OK, now let's turn to the analytical method. And we have two equations there. First of all, the thin lens equation tells us for a given lens, that is a lens of a given focal length f, and for a given object, that is at a certain object distance s from the lens, this tells us where the image is going to be formed. It tells us what the image distance s prime is. Here's the equation. It is exactly the same as the mirror equation, but don't forget the sign conventions are different. The uh, other information we want to have about the image is whether it's reduced or enlarged and by how much, and also whether it's upright or inverted. So this information is contained in the magnification or the lateral magnification of the lens. And this is uh, how we work this out. Here's a lens, and for argument's sake, let's say we have a converging lens. Here's an object. And here's one of those principal rays, the one that passes through the center of the lens. Now, I know that the image is going to be formed somewhere along this ray. So let's say the image is formed over here. This defines two right angle triangles formed by the central ray, the object, the image, and the optical axis. And these two right angle triangles are similar, so their sides must all be in the same proportion. So if we call the height of the object y, and we call the height of the image y prime, and the base of the left triangle is actually the object distance s, whereas the base of the right triangle, the right hand side triangle, is the image distance s prime. So the magnification is defined as the ratio of y prime to y. And this should be the same as the ratio of s prime to s. But if I write down the correct expression, you'll see that there's a minus sign there in front of the ratio s prime to s. And the reason for that is, in this picture, you can see that y prime and y are in opposite directions. So if in other words, the image is inverted. So if I want to express that, I would have to uh, say that y prime is negative because the image is below the optical axis, whereas y was positive. And so the ratio y prime over y should be a negative number. But at the same time, you can see that s prime is positive because it's to the right of the lens. s is positive because it's to the left of the lens. So the ratio s prime over s is positive. 
So in order to make that negative so that all the signs are consistent, I need to add on a minus sign in front, hence that minus sign in front of S prime over S. All right, so the program is from the thin lens equation, given F and given S, I find S prime, and then I plug that into the equation for the lateral magnification, and that will give us the rest of the information. Let's do an example. Here's a very rudimentary camera. Looks like this. It's a box with an opening, and in that opening there is a single converging thin lens. Now, at the back of the camera, not shown here, is a sensor. So it could be a CCD or it could be some film or whatever, uh, a sensor sensitive to light where we're going to record our picture. So here's the optical axis of the camera. Here's the primary focal point of the objective lens. So to the right of the lens, somewhere inside the camera. And we're going to take a picture of this rather uninteresting looking object. So to see where the picture is formed, let's do some ray tracing. Here's the ray parallel to the axis, passes through the primary focal point, hits the sensor at some point. Here's the ray passing straight through the lens, undeflected, hits the sensor at exactly the same point. So these two rays intersect at the back of the camera where the sensor is, and I'm going to get a nice sharp image. Um, okay, so I'm going to propose some questions for you, and before you look at the answers, I'm going to invite you to pause the video and work out the answers for yourself. And then when you resume the video, you can check your answers with mine. All right, so let's say that's where the image is formed. Let's say that the focal length of this lens is 5.0 centimeters, but the object is 500 centimeters to the left of the lens. So my first question is, what is the distance from the lens to the sensor? And the second question is, the object is actually Bob, doesn't look like Bob, but it is, who is 180 centimeters tall. The question is, how tall is the image formed on the sensor of the camera? Okay, go ahead and pause the video, work out your answers, and check back with me in a few minutes. Okay, so we're back and here are the answers. The image distance we get from the thin lens equation, it comes out to be 5.05 centimeters, so a little bit beyond the focal length of the, of the camera. And from the magnification, we get that the height of the image, y prime, is the magnification times y. The magnification is minus s prime over s, so when we multiply that by the height of Bob, 180 centimeters, we get minus 1.82 centimeters. So the minus sign tells me that the image is inverted. Um, the, the fact that the image distance is positive tells me that the image is real, which is good. We want a real image projected onto the sensor. And the image is greatly reduced in size, which means that the camera can be, in fact, quite compact. So much for part one. In part two, we will continue um, exploring this time the human eye.